My name is Bridgette Dudley's Black and I'm from Houston, Texas. You are watching Girls Talk TV with your host, Gigi. This episode of Living and Eating Healthy is brought to you by... So I was 19 years old, you know, my biggest and most important thing of the day was figuring out what I was going to wear. Um, I, I wanted to go to college, but I couldn't go to the one I wanted to, so I had to go take my prerequisites in Pittsburgh. Life was, you know, I was young and not committed to anything. I found out um, I was in a relationship and I was engaged to be married and this person died of a heroin overdose and I had no idea that um, they were positive or that I was positive and at the um, the arrangements, the funeral arrangements or whatever, talking with his brother, he said, well, you know, Jody's been sick for a while and I'm like, sick? What do you mean sick? Well, you know, he has HIV. I'm just like, no, I didn't know and I've been sleeping with this man for like two years. So, well, at that moment in time, all of the facts about how you get HIV and how it affects you and all that was not present and accounted for. All I knew is that the man that I was about to get married to was dead, you know, uh, and he was sick and he has this HIV thing. And back then, we're talking 90, um, I wouldn't say that I was the most educated young woman. I mean, I was 19 years old. Yeah, we had sex ed, you know, in like my 10th grade year of high school. But, you know, moving forward, you know, going into my college years, you know, this is like you're sowing your wild oats years, like when you're like dating and, you know, um, examining what you want to do with your life. So in that moment, I couldn't feel anything about it. You know, because I had all this other stuff going on. I decided I went, I was hospitalized because I wasn't handling any of this very well. And, um, I went to the hospital and, you know, they do, they ask you if you would consent to a test. And, of course, I did. And, um, I got, I was confirmed. It was confirmed for me. I, I was told in November and it was confirmed in January of 1991. So, in the confirmation, there's like this wave of denial that comes over or came over me. I don't know what it's like for everybody else, but for me, it was just like, this is not happening to me. This is not my life. I'm 19 years old. Do you know what I mean? This, it's not happening to me. And I lived like that for like the next three years and it's really easy to fall into a web of denial but it has a like a murky dumpster juice kind of resignation to it because you have this secret that's so colossal and it's about you and no matter how beautiful you are how well you dress how well you do in school in your mind you're just like damaged goods. You're never ever going to progress, at least in my 19 year old mind. I could not fathom being anything more than um, that in that in those first couple years. Well, it was one of those kind of things where you um, either got to poop or get off the pot. You know what I mean? You're either going to die or you're going to live or, you know, you're either going to be honest with yourself or you're going to like walk around in these different masks. Now I'm 41 years old speaking in retrospect, but at that time, I mean, 
um, it wasn't like a conscious decision. Oh, I think I'll just become educated. It, it wasn't like that. I was angry. It was my secret. I couldn't even fathom having a relationship with anybody um, ever again in life, let alone getting married or ha having children. All of that just seemed like an impossibility, no matter how great the um, technology and things were. And this is, you know, we're talking 21 years ago. You know, um, they only had like maybe you couldn't even use all the fingers on one hand of regiments and cocktails that you could use. And um, it was back in a time where for an African-American female, um, this was like me, you know, this only happens to needle users and this only happens to gay white men and this only happens to, you know what I mean, um, whores, you know what I mean, in foreign countries. Oh, this came from Africa. Oh, it's that monkey thing. All kinds of, you know, um, you know, what you've heard through the grapevine. And, and as a 19 year old, I swear to goodness, it was like saying diabetes to me. You know what I mean? It did not, um, resonate uh any fear in me even when they told me at the funeral i was kind of like so uneducated about it that i really didn't even realize the gravity of what they had been what they were saying to me do you understand and i was 19 you know quite mature well i wouldn't say mature i was just you know i wasn't 12 you know or 11 because that's what age you know the populations who are getting infected now are they're very young and uh, uh what challenges there are the challenges of just any um, level of self-acceptance that was my biggest challenge everything else was you know it was going to be whatever it was going to be how I felt about it has always been my biggest challenge. Even now, after 21 years, I still have to work extra hard to keep the, you know, the sun rising inside of myself and not, you know, projecting damaged goods. But moreover than that, um, I have to care less about what people think and more about what people do and what I allow them to do to me as a result of things they don't even know. Do you understand? Like, someone could come up and be like, oh, you ain't, you ain't all that. You could probably have that hot shit. Young guys say crazy stuff when you don't respond to them. They'll like put you down or whatever. And the reality of it is, is that a conscious young person knowing that I actually did have it, it was just like, he may as well just punch me out on the sidewalk you know for the impact of it so it's almost like um secondary victimization Ooh, sorry you know um you can always um count on being re-injured as life goes on through the years you just have to um allow yourself to grow and not um wither with the 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 Debilitating um, stigma that comes with HIV. It's almost like, you know, um, anything that you nurture and put life into will grow. You know, it might grow wild, it might grow, you know what I mean, graceful, it might grow fast, but it will grow. One in four new AIDS cases are women. 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 And this epidemic does not discriminate. It doesn't care if you're pretty, it doesn't care how old you are, and color is not a factor. Learn the truth and know your status. Um, HIV um, is a little bit different from a uh, AIDS. HIV is the acquired immune uh, deficiency virus. It is just a virus in your body um, which slowly tears down your white blood cells. The white blood cells in your body is what keeps you healthy. And they're the ones that fight infections, fight diseases. Those are our fighters in our body. And um, HIV just slowly tears those down. And at some point, those um, white blood cells get so low that doctors define your status now from HIV to AIDS, Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. 
Um, and that is when you te technically have full-blown AIDS and there's no going back. And so most, not most people, all people um, who actually acquire AIDS will eventually die from it. And AIDS will not kill you. It, what kills you is the flu, um, the common cold, because your body can't fight off the infections, can't fight off the diseases that normal white blood cells are able to help you fight. And so you don't die from AIDS, you die from common everyday things. Long and short of it, yes and no. And let me explain. The four main... Um, modes of uh, transmission are uh, semen, uh, vaginal fluid, breast milk, and blood. In terms of kissing, back when I was educated uh, for HIV um, in the late 80s, early 90s, we were told that you would have to swallow about two gallons of infected saliva in order to be infected. However, we now know that it's a lot more than that since the HIV virus is present within the saliva. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's only been one or two cases where kissing you can, um, well, kissing has been the um, mode of transmission. And I think in those cases it was generally because somebody had blood in the saliva from brushing their teeth and they're going on a date sort of thing. So the long and the short of it, HIV is present in saliva um, and certainly, again, blood, the breast milk, um, vaginal fluid, and semen. We have other fluids too, like synovial fluids in the joints, cerebral uh, spinal fluid, um, amniotic fluid. Um, and again, those are generally considered safe, but if there's blood in those fluids, then certainly can be a mode of transmission. Um, many chronic illnesses you get and it's not your fault. I mean, you get cancer, you get heart disease, those are things that can be part of your DNA, can be part of your genes that get passed down from family. And unfortunately, HIV and AIDS, it can, you can get it from your mother. However, it is more common to contract HIV and AIDS because of your lifestyle choices. Yeah, it, it certainly has. And unfortunately, we stopped talking about it as a community, as a society. Uh, I believe a few years ago, um, one of the papers in Washington um, came out and said that 3% of the entire population of Washington, D.C. was actually HIV positive. And which is interesting because I believe if we took all the cancers known to humankind and we put them together, I don't think that that would even infect or affect uh, one half of 1% of the population. And when you look at an epidemic, the CDC, again, um, says that uh, an epidemic occurs when 1% of the population is infected by a disease. And so right now, D.C., at least the last time I checked, three percent of the entire population so they're you know three times the level of an epidemic so it's still something that we need to talk about right here in dc right here in dc and, and across the united states before i was diagnosed i was 19 years old you know my biggest and most important thing of the day was figuring out what i was going to wear um I, I wanted to go to college, but I couldn't go to the one I wanted to, so I had to go take my prerequisites in Pittsburgh. Life was, you know, I was young and not committed to anything. I found out um, I was in a relationship, and I was engaged to be married, and this person died of a heroin overdose, and I had no idea that um, they were positive or that I was positive and at the um, the arrangements, the funeral arrangements or whatever, talking with his brother, he said, well, you know, Jody's been sick for a while. And I'm like, sick? What do you mean sick? Well, you know, he has HIV. I went into isolation. Not really. I. I I um I didn't have I mean part of my life that is you know is not just encompassed HIV I mean I had a lot of things going on at different stages in my life but at this point of acceptance which I was about 25 we're talking four and a half years later after knowing we're talking about you know um a whole lot of um you know, failed relationships because, oh, when should I tell? Should I tell now? Should I tell later? Should I, you know, um, we're talking a whole lot of 
not telling at all and running away from city to city to town to town to try to avoid um, revealing who I am because who I am is not acceptable in this country. And in my community, it is really an African American community. It, it it's it's just not something that you expect. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, um, a lesbian or or bisexual female to like even, you know what I mean? Come in contact with, which was my lifestyle. You know what I mean? It it just wasn't. You know, it was like, and that was sort of like a a really. Um, big part of who I chose to permanent see myself with as far as sexuality because of the fact that you know um, the very first person who like accepted that I was HIV positive and wanted to be bothered with me um, was like it just like blew my mind you know what I mean and I I figured that I would probably do better in relationships with women than I would with men because of the fact that I don't have to go through all of that. It is what it is. This is what it is. And because she gave me that, you know, courage, mm -hmm. you know, just one person gave me the courage to just say, hey, um, I'm HIV positive, been this way for I don't know how many years. You in, you in, you out, you out. It doesn't really make a difference um, to me except for that you have a choice. And that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of information going on, but the problem is that something is only Im important to a, a person or a person's life if, in fact, it's something that touches their community. And over the years, this has always touched our community. Um, African American females, women, it's just that the way the world projects this subject is imperative to how a woman or man or anyone contracting HIV accepts this, you know, and back when I got it, this was a shameful, shameful thing, this, you, you, you know, it, in a death sentence, you know, now, not so much. I wouldn't say that it, it's still a very um, stigmatized and um, a lot of shame and guilt has to be overcome by anyone because in this day and age, one would think, oh, you have no excuse. You have absolutely no excuse. There's like all kinds of contraceptives. You really have no excuse. But the thing about it is that in a world that projects and minimizes the most heinous of things, even to the point of maybe even causing harm by way of drug experimentation, whatever, you know, to, um, you know, keep the good old economy flowing, it causes a lot of harm. You know, like the Catholic Church may not want to talk about safe sex, you know what I mean? But yet at the same time, you have all of these children growing up you know, under this religious, old-school thinking and trust. When I say they had pestilence and disease even back in biblical days and they were doing the same thing, not talking about it is not going to save those girls' lives. It's just not, and not, uh, and minimizing it. You know, of course, now that we have more than, I can count on two hands how much medication we have, it's a wrap, you know, now... The government wants to label it as something that isn't life-threatening, and but it's about to wipe out the next generation before they even get started. You are watching Girls Talk TV with your host, Gigi. This episode of Living and Eating Healthy is brought to you by... Girls Talk TV, welcome back to another episode of Living and Eating Healthy Dermatology. This show is all about beautiful hair, nails, and skin. With me, I have Dr. Melanie Macklin. 
She is the celebrity dermatologist. You've seen her on Chris Rock's film, Good Hair, and you've also heard her on Steve Harvey's Morning Show. So thank you so much for being on the show today, Dr. Matt. You're welcome. Thank you, Miss Gigi. See the full episode on your local TV network and visit us on Twitter at Girls Talk TV and Facebook at Girls Talk Television. You know, I've read conflicting reports. Um, I've read that HIV has actually been around since the 50s and others are saying that it originated in the 70s. The point of origin, everyone pretty much um, concedes that it was in, in Africa. The mode of transmission seems to be um, up in the air. We have heard all sorts of outlandish stories, um, but we do believe that it was from, you know, a, a monkey. Uh, we believe that it um, originated um, something called SIV, simian immunodeficiency virus, which is in, 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 in the monkeys. And we believe that when somebody ate a monkey, um, that tank of blood, for whatever reason, got into, um, you know, the human, it, it penetrated the human barrier. Our skin um, is, is our best protection. That's the largest, largest organ, and that's our best protection. But if somebody was uh, eating a monkey and they cut themselves, they certainly could have got the blood inside of themselves. Um, we've also heard that people were doing some other things to monkeys, and it, you know, crossed that way. We've also heard that the government, you know, planted the virus. So... Pretty much uh, my understanding and the recollection is, is that uh, the medical community believes that it point of origin was Africa and it came from monkeys. No, um, to the best of my knowledge, there is not. Uh, there are some uh, physicians out there. Um, there are some people in the complementary and alternative therapy worlds who believe that there is. Absolutely. You know, in fact, what we see... Um, I believe women between the ages of 14 and 19, one in four women have um, a sexually transmitted disease, and I believe it's 50% of the, or 15% of them, excuse me, actually have multiple uh, sexually transmitted diseases, and they're unaware of that. Most, yes, for the most part they are. My recommendation is, is that if you are going to have a surgery and you know it, I would recommend uh, something called blood banking. Go to... Uh, your doctor and ask them if you can donate your own blood, they'll freeze it for you and they can use it back um, during your surgery. Uh, there is something that, um, because of the seroconversion, people will continue to contract the HIV virus through the blood banks. The last time I checked, which has been at least a year or two, I think it's one in 500,000 will contract the virus. So basically you're safe. We have the best testing mechanisms, but it is possible, absolutely. Uh, yes and no. Um, depends on who's doing them. I would uh, encourage you to ask to see a certificate from the uh, Department of Mental Health and Hygiene if you're going to go and get a tattoo. I know there have been uh, certainly cases where people go and get a tattoo and they will become infected with uh, hepatitis B or C um, via the tattoo. And certain laboratory um, testing, uh, we found that the HIV virus will actually live in a needle for up to 30 days. So if you share a needle and you set it down and you decide that you're going to, you know, shoot up again, you know, a few weeks down the road, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be safe. So, well, there certainly is a high rate of uh, HIV in the domestic violence community. Um, it reminds me years ago, I was leading a support group and we actually had a woman who was HIV positive for the better part of 10 years. And she had been dating and living with a gentleman for two some years. And she came to the group and said, I think I'm ready to tell my boyfriend that I'm HIV positive. And unbeknownst to the boyfriend, you know, of course, they were having sex unprotected for two years. So it's possible that she could have infected him. And we do see, you know, a high rate of domestic violence. Um, and a situation like that would be a, you know, a prime reason why that that happens, unfortunately. It's me, the trash man, again. Today I'm doing a show about something that's more important than killing rappers. This here, what I hold in my hand, is a list of women who I actually infected with AIDS on purpose. I actually gave out all of these women the AIDS virus on purpose. So if I call your name and you just so happen to be on my 
I got the AIDS from that nigga list, then uh, God bless you. The first name I'm going to call out is, um, it was easy. The reason why I did it is because I felt that the inner city ghettos should be um, taught a strong, valuable lesson from watching this video. These girls were easy. They were definitely easy. I drive a Jaguar. I have something material. I got gold and diamonds on. I can just park outside of a, any nightclub, hip hop nightclub, and blow my horn at a girl. The next thing you know, boom. She's in my car. She's on her way to the hotel or my house, and we're having unprotected sex. And you don't even have to, you know, they don't, not one of these girls, not one of these fucking girls on this list has even mentioned to me about um, you got a condom or anything they didn't do that it was like they just didn't care they were too infatuated with the glitter the gold the material shit and not realizing that here I am a grown ass man ran on top of these young beautiful black and Latino women and skidding nothing but pure original hard grown AIDS infected semen up in these women and not only one time but at least twice I have done it to each girl I've had lots of unprotected sex with these girls and if they just so happen to see this video um, you may want to just go head on to the local clinic where you are and get some of that medication that they usually give you. Any organization that supports educating women, especially girls, on anything, especially something that is as important and life-altering as uh, being informed about HIV and AIDS is very important. Um, I'm a science teacher. I am involved with Teenage Lives, um, and I see every day that students are not educated. They um, live haphazardly, and they um, throw care to the wind when it comes to certain aspects of their life because they don't know the facts. They don't know how one little decision can change their life forever. And so that's why I think um, an organization like this is so necessary and so needed. To learn more, go to girlstalktv.org. Thanks for watching. Join us online at girlstalktv.org and visit us on Facebook and Twitter too.